Hi, Misha here. And if there's one brand that Jay and I like as much as Walter, at least one brand of pistol, I should say, it's Pietro Beretta, the world's oldest firearms manufacturer. And one of the few that's still privately owned. So we're going to kind of do a two-part video. In this one, I'm going to talk about the history and evolution. And then in Jay's part, he'll talk more about the sights, ergonomics, accuracy, stuff of that nature. Seem good? Now this one you've seen before. This is my Beretta Model 81FS. So it's a relatively current production, 21st century at any rate. Chambered for 32, 7.65 Browning. Yeah, you've seen this one before. But in this video, we're going to also talk about this. The Beretta Model 81. As a police trade-in surplus. Because these have been on the market in the last year or so. And there's two basic batches. There's a Century Arms import that it seemed to be Italian police surplus. The condition kind of varies wildly. But the ones that Jay and I picked up are imported by PW Arms and are said to be Italian prison systems, correction systems surplus. And these seem to be in a little bit better shape overall. So basically, talking about early production, 81, versus later production, 81. With the series collectively marketed as Cheetah in the USA. But while we do that, we really have to talk about other guns in the Beretta line. Because there's such a mirror image. Up here we have the model 1951 in 9mm. We've done a couple of recent videos on this. Down here we have the model 70 or series 70 in 32. Here we have the model 92S police surplus that Jay and I both bought a few years ago. They were kind of everywhere for a time in 9mm. And then here is my trusty old commemorative M9 sold back in the 90s for the US service pistol. And of course in 9mm. So it's interesting because these really do mirror each other. Now Going back to the original handgun Beretta made, the 1915, the series soon split into two sizes and styles. You had the larger 9mm, of course in the beginning the 1915 fired 9mm Glycenti, and you had what would evolve into the smaller scale, the 1917 that fired 32. And as time would go on, the 15 would give way to the 23, and then after World War II, that would be developed into the 1951. As I said in its video, it was a big first for Breda. It was their first locked breech 9mm, 9x19 Parabellum Luger. It was single action only, 8 round magazine, I had their traditional open top slide. Safety here, I mean up here, I'm sorry. Mag catch down here on the grip. This thumb rest. Early versions, they tried with aluminium frames, but they proved not to be durable enough, so they went to steel frame. So once they released this for the military market, they released this. In 1958, Beretta started offering the Series 70, 
our Model 70. And it really is a small 51. Unlike the full size 9mm, the 32 was very easy to have with an alloy frame, so this is always did. It was the first 32 that Beretta did that had a last round hold back with an external release control here. Very similar to that on the 51. Open top of the barrel sticking out. Has single stack 8 round magazine. Mag release like the 51's. Safety like the 51's. Cross bolt style as I call it. Pretty traditional iron sights. Yeah. Now, as time would wear on, Beretta would start working on the 92 series in the early 70s, around 72. So when they were working on these in 9mm, they did release an updated version of the 70 known as the 70S that went to more of a modern style safety. And then in 1975, the 92 version was first ready to go. They made a small production run, and they would fully introduce it in 77, 78. Now the 92S here was made by request of Italian police. It would have the slide-mounted decocker safety, early versions would uh, have a frame safety only and that would lead directly to our gun here. This was first shown off in 1976 and was available for purchase in 1977 and really had the same features as the 92S, the contemporary 9mm. The 92S was, of course, an alloy frame. It was a double stack. 15 shot. Sorry, guys. Sometimes it's not easy to do sing, uh, one handed here. Mag. It was a lock breech like the 51, but unlike the 51, it was a double and single action. gun. Had a 4.9 inch barrel and was intended for police, military, and even civilian users. So the, sorry some foam from earlier guys, eh, I'm gonna wash this tomorrow I think. The 81 originally known as the Series 81 also had a double single action trigger Sorry. and it had the frame safety like the original 92 but it was ambidextrous And also ambidextrous, or at least reversible, it went to a new style of mag release, so-called browning pattern here. It could be swapped to either side. And it used a new pattern of 12-shot magazine for the 81. Now the 84, which was the 380 version, would have a 13-shot. Yeah, in 77 they would launch the 81, double stack, the 82 single stack in 32, and the 84 
double stack and 380 9mm quarto. And then these would be joined a year or two later by the 85 single stack 380. The gun itself, thanks to the alloy frame, is about 24 ounces. Not bad for the 70s. It has a barrel of about 3.8 inches. Overall length of about 6.8 inches. Pretty traditional sights again. Blue to finish, although kind of a nickel finish was available. It did use polymer synthetic grips, at least for military, police, whatever contract. Uh, wood grips were also available. In fact, they had a lot of versions. Notice it has the same kind of rounded trigger guard as the new Puma over here, the 70. And even the uh, S, you'll notice, has the rounded trigger guard. The S2 has the smooth grip straps. As does this. Boop. But interestingly, it does have a ribbed trigger. So, yeah, pretty... Pretty neat that it's a little 92S. And also notice that the safety does not act as a decocker. It's just a safety. It's, it takes down, much like the 92S as well, with what I consider a two-piece takedown system with a spring-loaded pin and lever. It's, of course, just a straight blowback gun, though, although it's very similar. Just It's basically like the 92 inside, just without the falling wedge. And, of course, we've gone away from the finger rest extension from the 70 to a more or less flush fit. Six out a little bit, just so you can grab it base plate. And, yeah, these are introduced and became very popular. As I said, this came from the Italian Corrections Prisons System. It has a government property mark of CAT4. also has an old date code, you can tell. Pretty neat. They were also bought by Italian police, as well as police in other nations like Japan, Argentina, and... Uh, Actually, Israel purchased quite a few 81s. They had been fans of the 70 for a number of years, having purchased it in the 1960s, and discovered the whole open-top slide. They also used the 50, uh, 51. It was pretty amenable to the rigors of the desert. So when they came out with a double action and higher capacity version in the 81 they uh, they jumped on board the Israeli police actually were using the model 81 well into the 21st century these were sold in America under the cheetah name and were popular here both in 32 and 380 back in the 1980s because of their relatively large capacity, relatively small size for that era. Got to keep in mind the trend in handguns is very different back then. And also were popular because they were very left hand friendly, something that wasn't all that um, common back then. Ambidextrous safety and swappable mag catch. Also, the way they eject is not terribly distracting for left-handed shooters. I should point out that the safety on these uh, prison contract guns has been a little bit extended and modified for easier uh, use. Activation, deactivation. So, kind of neat there. 
Notice they have the old style, old style grips, colorized and whatnot. So yeah, these have been coming onto the market recently. The 81s, the 81Bs, the 81BBs. Which gives them the differences in versions. What what are they? And kind of, um, what's the point? Well, here they are, disassembled. Show you the internals here on the frame. Notice there's no safety in front of the hammer there. Whereas on the newer model, the FS, you can see the mechanism there maybe. If I'm halfway getting this on camera. Internals. Of course the slides will reflect this difference as well. The original gun did not have a loaded chamber indicator, newer versions would, in addition to the firing pin safety. <clears throat> so there's definitely a push to make these safer. The original barrel here, you can see the step. The newer barrel, no step, and it's definitely a thicker profile, as I suspected, in the front. It's a little bit lighter weight of a barrel. I'm sure they did it when they went to the fat slide. Here's the original guide rod. Notice it has a flat base. Rounded tip. Doo -doo -doo. And here is the newer style. The tip is a little bit, it still has a rounded edge, but it's a little more flat. But the big difference is it has this protrusion or nipple on the end. And even the springs are a bit different. The newer one, I'm sure, to work with the different larger slide and whatnot is a little bit longer than the older one also it just feels heavier dutier I bet this is one of the things they upgraded when they did to the FS version just a slightly thicker stouter spring the mags are pretty well unchanged, except for the finish, blued, here's this one, it's got the more modern finish on it, the Brunighton, the old one even has the witness holes in the back, which is again, a pretty modern feature for late 70s early 80s so yeah and um, one neat feature it's easy to take the takedown lever out if you need to by just pressing the spring loaded <clears throat> button here but I don't really want to do that but it does retain it for you these uh, takedown catches are a little different externally they don't look a lot different but internally the, the angles and whatnot are a little different. I love little changes like that. It's really fun to see how designers tweak things. Well, much as the 92S 
grew and was improved into what would become the 92F and eventually 92FS throughout the 1980s. The 81 would evolve into the 81FS during the same basic time period. The first model after would be the 81B. This would be the first to introduce a firing pin block or safety. They would also tinker with the extractor a bit, improving it. And then with the 81BB, we would start to see quite a few changes. They would go to a serrated back and front strap because the <laughs> straps on the 81 are obviously very slick. They would also go from the smaller, finer, shorter groove serrations to longer, coarser grooves. Speaking of the slide with the BB, they would go to a fat slide, dimensionally just a little bit larger than on the 81. They would also go to a new style of white dot combat type sights. And they would actually change up the trigger system a bit on the original 81 with the safety on your trigger is just physically blocked from coming back although it can move the hammer a bit meaning the hammer has some travel to it but with the 81 BB like on this one the safety being on totally disconnects the hammer from the trigger and actually locks the trigger in the rear position so you can't pull it back. Just part of the safety system improving things. They would also update the guide rod and spring a bit and, and take down catch to try to make mainly reassembly easier because these are, can be a little finicky and uh, the B and BB and all that will start to appear around 1982 give or take and after the 92F was adopted in 85 the 81F would appear around 87 give or take and that's essentially what we have here because the 81 FS is just a little bit of a modernized tweak version of 81 F a little better metallurgy a little better safety <clears throat> a bit of an internal improvement on some of the durability of the parts but the same basic gun and of course the big difference is the squared so-called combat trigger guard where you can put your finger here they even serrated it they also went away from a true blued finish to what is called Bruniton same as used on the military guns much more durable rust resistant finish kinda gives them more of a matte texture versus uh, straight blued and with the 81F we started to go to a chrome lined bore also notice in the barrel notice it's a straight barrel on the 81 there's a small step in front of the chamber on the barrel so presumably the barrel is a little bit thicker out on the newer 81 FFS's as well. 
And another very important change. The safety not only acts as a safety, it's now, if you push it up, a decocker. If I can do it single-handed here. There we go. So it's kind of a... Again, taking that from the military gun, which introduced the ambidextrous slide decocker we're all familiar with. Now, with the F and FS models, the 81, and of course the 84, also get it. And the mags, too, would have the new finish on the base plate. The mag catch is still reversible. Still a 12 round mag. We were going to a newer, more modern grip made of more modern polymers. It's more of a straight black. The whole gun is a little less showy than this uh, older version. Also notice the top of the slide is just rounded. On the newer versions, it is squared off. This in conjunction with the new white dot sights just makes aiming a little easier, or so I am told. My first hand experience with aiming is a bit on the limited side. And there you have it. The 81 and 84 were popular in America in the 1980s, but of course when the assault weapons ban came through in 94, they were affected because one of the big draws was the high capacity, 12 plus 1 or 13 plus 1. I know going the 10 plus 1 isn't a big downgrade for these, but it was something. Plus, by the 90s, people were starting to turn away from 32 looking towards 380 more and it would not be too long before the compact 9 millimeters would start to hit such as the Glock 26 and then eventually the slimline ones like the Walther PPS and of course in the 21st century Breda themselves would do their nano kinda leaving these guns in the dust at least in America. So they disappeared from the US market for a time. But, interestingly, the 81 FS's came back in around 2011 and were imported in relatively small but consistent numbers until at least 2018. Sources kind of disagree if Beretta in Italy has finally ended production. Some say it ended in 2017. Others say it's ongoing. The thing is, when even when they brought these 81 FS models back, they're very expensive. They are um, 600 dollars plus guns retail. Granted, they you know very nicely made, very reliable, but that's quite a bit for a little 32. So I think most people who buy them are buying them more for the nostalgia. And just because they're neat, yours truly included. But these police surplus guns that have recently come in, depending on grade and model and condition, there have been 81s, 81Bs, 81BBs. And uh, cheapest ones I've seen were around 170 but they were pretty well used. And the most expensive are about $300 for excellent condition. And like I said, there are the PW and the Century imports. And it seems like the PWs are a little nicer, but they are the 81s. Some people might prefer the BB for the serrated grip and uh, firing pin block safety. I can't blame them there. So it's kind of up to you. I wanted this one to have an early 81 because I've, I've had this 
81FS, which you've seen in quite a few older videos for uh, several years now. And it's a great little gun. I really enjoy shooting it. Long but very smooth trigger pull. Single action is fine. This one. Honestly, it's a little bit heavier. Still not bad. Single action though. Actually has a very very good break on this one. Very light compared to the FS here. Yeah, I'd say the 81 is a little lighter trigger than the uh, 81 FS. But uh, it's also a used gun. Although it doesn't appear to be in use that much. I've always been a big fan of 32. Modern hollow point loads and defensive loads are actually quite competent. I've never been a fan of 380. That's why whenever there's an option, I... In fact, I don't own a single 380. I do own Makarov guns, 9x18 Makarov PM. So that's kind of my alternative. But um, my thing is, okay, 32 is less snappy. I've also found 32 to be more reliable. A lot of guns in 380, to my mind, just don't quite have the reliability. I think it's because of the the dimensions of the cartridge. 32 is a little narrower, but the same length. Not, you know, 30, 380 is a little fatter, but still the same length too. So feeding and whatnot. Also, for people that care. 32 does seem to be more accurate, a better target shooter than 380. But at the end of the day, it just comes down to personal preference. And with the modern 9mm, 9mm Luger, Parallelbellum, NATO, really that's the answer for a true defensive gun. Neither 32 or 380 are the best choice now, or even the cheapest. Both of them cost more than 9mm. But that doesn't mean we can't have a lot of fun with these guns, and that's what they really are. They're very high quality. Um, I like where PW import mark these on the bottom of the trigger guard. An excellent place to do it if you have to do it. That place gets a lot of wear on guns anyway from where your finger's at, so boohoo if you wear it off. <laughs> Very high quality. This one was probably made around 1980, so late 70s, early 80s Italian production quality. But it is nice to see that the uh, the newer production guns, like this one, still don't disappoint. In fact, as far as durability and corrosion resistance and Shooting ergonomics and comfort and sights. This is clearly an improvement. This is a better gun. Just as the M9 is a better gun than the 92S. But that's not to say the S doesn't have its place. Of course it does. For one thing, it's got a very nice, very attractive blued finish. And it's... Italian police connection is just super cool. And thus is the 81s. But what a neat gun. And it was very revolutionary when it came out. Uh, double action. Relatively lightweight. High capacity for its day. Lefty friendly. And actually built to be extremely reliable and durable. And with very good police service in Italy and Japan and Israel and a few other places. In fact, in co according to Wikipedia, who doesn't mention Israel, oddly enough, but according to Wikipedia, uh, Kazakhstan, at least private security over there, actually quite recently went to the Cheetah around 2007, which is kind of funny that there are still new users within the 21st century, but... It works, and it's a cool little gun. Of course, so is the older 
70. I've had this one for a long time, but this is just very light. But of course it's single action and 8 plus 1. But we'll talk about this, I'm sure. It just feels like a good year to revisit Beretta. We're also going to get kind of do a retrospective on the 92 and M9 family. Why not? Jay has an, another member coming in that we'll put with mine and probably have a full review. But uh, yeah, that's kind of the history and close-up look at these. So stay tuned for Jay's video that'll get more into probably what most of you care about, but what can I say? I'm a history nerd. <laughs> so I do appreciate you bearing with me. Any questions or comments, or if you own one of these police surplus guns, we'd love to hear what you obtained and how you like it. <laughs> this is Misha. If you could like, share, or subscribe. Also, if you'd like to help support us, check out the link to our Patreon page. Otherwise, we will catch you very soon next time.